Hello everybody, welcome to this video tutorial in which I will show you how to create a user API with image upload. The front end will be Svelte, the back end will be PHP, that will be the API. It's going to be a fully CRUD API and the back end will be actually the back end server database will be MariaDB or MySQL. In this case, we're going to be using MariaDB. Please keep in mind that I will create the exact same video in which I will be using Svelte, but I will do the backend with Node.js and the database will be done with MongoDB. The videos are not ready yet. Well, probably when you see this, it's they're already ready. But remember to subscribe, get notifications and like the video. This is what we are going to cover throughout these 10 videos. In this video, we're going to set up the following the API routes and we're going to test them with Postman. Then we're going to create the database and we're going to connect to the database. For the backend, we will cover getting users, user, deleting, creating and updating. For the front end, we're going to create the video in these two video sets. And the last video, I will compare how I did PHP with MySQL and Node.js with MongoDB. So that will come all my opinions about it. Please keep in mind that in the last couple of weeks, I have done a lot of research about videos in YouTube. And most people, they just show you the solution to it, but not how they get to that. So all the videos are, let's say, perfect made videos. So they just code and you watch and you copy it. But this video is not about that. In this video, we'll make a lot of mistakes because I'm coding this live with you. And you will see how I think and how I debug the application. So please understand that if at some points I get stopped with it, well, it's because I'm coding as you should be coding it. So you will see and you will hear all the thoughts I have while I'm recording. So let's go and start installing what we need for this video tutorial. We are going to need a server that will support PHP. I have in my computer installed SAMP. So you can just Google for SAMP. Go ahead and download SAMP in your computers. If you are in a Mac computer, maybe you want to use MAMP. So you can just go and install it for Mac. Or you can also use WAMP, which is for Windows. It doesn't really matter what you install. Just make sure that you have installed that in your machines. So any of those three will do. Once you have installed it, if you go to localhost, I will see a broken page now because my server is not running. And this is what you should see if you have not installed your application correctly. If you are in a Mac computer, in some computers, at least, you have to do colon 8080 and that will actually open the correct page. I don't need that because I'm in my Windows machine and now localhost fails. So I'm going to start my SAMP application, XAMP. It's not there, but I have it here. And I'm going to start the Apache server and MySQL. You can see Apache is by default listening to port 80. So now that it's started, I can just reload and I get this out because I don't have anything in that folder. I will show you where you should place your website. So if you go to the file explorer, in my computer, if I go to C, SAMP, htdocs, this is where I will place my solution. At the moment, when I do localhost, I'm pointing to htdocs. And since I don't have any files in here, I get this out. So that was for the setup of the server with the database. We will also need to test the API. There are many plugins and many programs that you can use. I will be using Postman. It's free. You just go ahead and download it. And once you have downloaded and installed Postman, you should be able to open it. So I will just open it from here, Postman. And you will see this popping up, something like this. Maybe your theme is white. I already changed the theme to dark. Just go to settings. And the theme that I selected was this dark theme. So this will be the tool I will be using to test the API. 
you will also need to install VS Code if you have Sublime, Atom, or Brackets, whatever editor you have, it's fine. Go ahead and download VS Code and install it. So these are the tools that we need for now, and I am going to open now VS Code. So it's called code in a Windows machine. I will open a new window. And this is what you get out. Now you need to point to the htdocs folder. So I'm going to open the folder. I'm going to go to C, SAMP, and in here I will point to htdocs. And that's where I will host my solution. All right, let's just make sure that it's still recording. It is. This file will contain my front end application and my back end application. So we'll divide this into two folders, the back folder and the front folder. In the back folder, I will create my API. Don't get too confused about it and start creating folders everywhere. I will just do it straight underneath the back folder. So we'll create the first file. Let's call it getusers.php. And the reason I call it get users is because I'm following this idea here, get users, get a user. So I'm going to set up these routes in this video that we are at the moment. So get, get, delete, create, update. All right. So get the user. I'm going to create a new file called get user in singular, plural singular. I'm going to create a new file, delete a user.php. Then we're going to create a user and the last file will be update a user.php. Remember guys that everything I do here is live. So bear in mind that I will show you how I debug any issues. Let's start with getting a single user. Let's go there. Let's create here PHP tag, some spaces and let's zoom in a little bit. What we're going to do is have an API in which everything we do is going to be JSON based. So pretend that this is the best case scenario. So I will just echo here a user. I save and then we go to Postman. When you build an API, you should never open a web browser. Never. You just build it via a testing tool like Postman and then you will connect to it from the front end application. So for him, Postman, let's create a new collection. Let's call it, let's call it company. It's going to be the users for the company. And we're going to create a request. We are going to call it get user. Let me see what I have here. It's called get user. So we call it get user. The name doesn't really matter. It's just for us to have some syntax that we understand throughout the code. So over here, we're going to point to localhost. We are going to point to back and we're going to point to get-user.php. Maybe you didn't see all the elements popping up there. It doesn't matter. But what matters is that you have this user here. Now, since this is an API, we should be sending JSON. So we're going to create an, a string here that looks like JSON. So it will have an status. And throughout this API, I will always work with the status. If I send an status one to the front end to Postman, that means that everything was successful. If I send a zero, that will be an error. So status one, and then I'm going to send the data because I want to send the data for this user. And this user in itself, since this is a single user, it will be a JSON object. The user will have an ID, I will just hard code ID one. The user will have a name, I will just hard code the name A. We save it, we test it. What we, have, we get here is just plain text. So now we need to tell Postman that this here should be JSON. To do that, we are going to add a header. And then we say that the content dash type is going to be application forward slash JSON. We save, we test it, and now Postman knows that it has to interpret the response as JSON. And that's what we get out. Obviously here we're missing the image path or the picture path, but we don't care about that because we're just setting these routes 
for the moment. So that was working fine. We take all these, we copy it, and now we're going to open the get users. Get users. We paste, and we have the exact same thing. So now I will put here comment video one, save it. And I will take the exact same comment and put it in the get users video one. So if you guys watch this video, let's say you're in video number five or six, and then you see this line of code here, you can always know that this came from video one, so you will understand why I added it. So this will be like a map, so you can always jump between videos and learn faster. So now that we get all the users, if you get many users, you're never going to send just one user like such, well, you could, but you only have one user, but what you do is you send an array of users. So I'm going to save this. That's why I added the array tags. And now I'm going to go to Postman and we create a new request. This request is going to be called get users. We open get users and we take the exact same path for get user, we copy it, and then we place it in get users. The difference is now that we, play, we point to users and then we send it. By the way, the way I'm sending so fast, I'm not clicking on send, I'm doing control enter. So if you want to do that, do control enter, maybe command enter in Mac. So I'm getting the data, it's an array with one user. If I want to expand this as a demo, I will do a comma, I will copy this JSON user, and then I will do a two, and the name will be B. Save, test it again. We have these two users. I save, by the way, I did Control S to save it, and then I will save this. You can also click on save or Control S. So now we have the get user and get users. We will take this, we are going to copy it and we are going to open the delete user file. Let's go to delete user. We paste and the status will be one. And when we delete a user, we're not going to send really data about it. We can just send a message and the message will say user deleted. That and like so, user delete it save it now we go to postman create a new route some people call it root i don't know why i call it route so this will be a new request here it's going to be called delete user we save it and over here we're going to delete the user so we're going to copy the get users path you can copy the get user path it doesn't really matter and then in the delete user we're going to add that path but now we point to delete user forget about that just like so so the user has been deleted eventually we will actually say which user you can say the user with id 1 will be deleted or the user with ID 15 and so on. But for now, we're testing these endpoints and that's working fine. Remember to save it. Now that we have saved that, we're going to go to the update user to the create. Let's take the create user. Same, same as before, we copy, we paste. In the create user, the status is one. The message will display user created. We save it, go to Postman, Create a new endpoint connection, a request, and this will say create user. Let's open it. Here we have to think about it. So far we have been using get, get, and get because they don't actually send any vital data or sensitive data to the system. But when you create a user, you cannot use the get protocol because you need to pass an image and the data that you are sending is going to be sensitive almost always because you are going to create a user with a name, with an email, with a password and so on. Therefore, you need to change this protocol from get to post. And you can see there are many protocols here. Some systems use patch, delete. You don't really need them. Yeah, sure. You can use them to make your application 
let's call it more I wouldn't even say more professional but standard that's the word but with post and get you can create anything you guys want let's take the path from the delete a route and we paste it here and now we point to create user.php let's test it this you are not seeing in your computer this is probably because i have done a lot of stuff before now the user has been created i save and we go and we create the next route which is the update user route copy everything from the create user paste it and over here we're going to say that the status is one and the user has been updated we save it we move to postman and we create a new path here a new request this is going to be the update user you can call this whatever you want and when you update a user you're in the same scenario as with post because what when you update the user maybe you want to change the email the password the image and if you're thinking about images or files you're already thinking about post posting if you're thinking about email password name it's a post so every time you want to update or save data you have to use a post sure you can also use patch or put if you want to update data and you don't really need it so let's copy and paste the path to post or to the update user then we delete that that's what you guys are going to see and then it says here that the user has been updated we save we save we can close this so you end up with nothing here and this is the setup in vs code with the database running we have not used it but it's running the apache server is running and we have tested it with postman so i guess this is the api routes with postman please guys you know the deal and the next video is going to be about this here database connecting to it tables and if you were in the other node.js video will be collections thank you for watching and grab this video soon